I really, 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 really hope that my hair is not blending in with my shirt. It's not blending in with the background. It's not blending in with the darkness. This is dark AF. I usually make my videos during the day, but duty calls. Am I right? I literally made this whole video, 25-minute video. I didn't edit it, but it's 25-minute video. Law of Correspondence goes so hard, right? False. I'm redoing it because I'm a perfectionist and I left out some major info. So here I am again in the nighttime. And I hope you guys can follow in the pitch black of the background that I am in. <laughs> Let's begin our video. Welcome to the Bloom Room. This is my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Chantel and I'm a spiritual guider. I don't have a title, but I'm a spiritual guider. Today's video, Seven Universal Laws, video number two, Law of Correspondence. My favorite of the universal laws, Law of Correspondence states that the laws and phenomena of one plane of existence correspond to the laws and phenomena on a different plane of existence. So Law of Correspondence is basically stating as within, so without, so without, as within, as above, so below, so below, as above, whatever the fuck. This law is proven with the law of mentalism because we know that all things are manifested or come from the same source, which is mentalism, mental energy, a thought. And the same laws apply to each unit or each combination of units. This law is my favorite because it allows access to understand some of the most trippiest, confusing, or, you know, just unknowable things of existence this law is the reason why we're able to see through fakeness while we're able to understand ourselves in a deeper level and it just helps us describe some of the most unknown natures of reality um this law corresponds with the third eye chakra and this law is actually the reason why all of our chakras are a thing and how that's so so when we say we describe the law of correspondence by saying the same laws apply to each plane of existence they correspond when we're talking about planes you know what is a plane a plane of existence is like a kind of trippy topic it's kind of hard to describe because language is so limiting and a plane is so hard to put into words so for knowledge sake for educational sake we're gonna describe all of the things in this video in a way that can help us to visualize and understand it but also don't get too wrapped up in any terms or definitions don't get don't grasp onto any vocabulary too strongly because ultimately it's all just to help us understand a plane is not a physical place and it's not a state of mind but it has qualities of both it has the qualities of a physical space and it has the qualities of a state of mind don't think about it too hard okay so when we're talking about planes, we're talking about the great physical plane, the great mental plane, the great spiritual plane. And what's surrounding these planes, what are these planes, you know, manifesting in is the scale of life. So education's sake, we're going to think of the scale of life as a line, right? With arrows pointing each way because infinite, infinite, and life is infinite. On the scale of life, we have the great physical plane. That's right here. This end, the lowest vibration you know that's how the scale of life is measured or however you want to say it is vibration and so physical plane is down here and that's the low that's a low vibration physical things are very dense and that's just a low vibration moving up in vibration we have the mental plane moving up even more in vibration we have the spiritual plane on the opposite end of the lowest vibration which is undifferentiated matter unmanifested matter is god source you know the most highest vibration and the most spacious that's how we can think of it low vibration is dense and high vibration is spacious and so that's why a lot of spiritual things we can't see with our eyes because of the vibration the energy that's you know involved the physical plane is 3d we all know that's three-dimensional that's what we can physically sense the mental plane is 4d and the spiritual plane is 5d that's why in spirituality we see you know a lot of terms when it comes to 5d the 5d is just referring to a state of mind or a vibration that you reach when you're you know ascending i guess we can say so the thing that creates planes are the degrees of the rate of vibration that's what creates these planes and that's what creates these um categories or distinctions there truly are no distinctions when it comes to the universe there's no hard lines there's no hard separations of physical mental spiritual but the vibration is what gives us the illusion that it is so 
So the lowest point of life is undifferentiated, unmanifested matter. The highest point of life is spirit. It's pure spirit, pure consciousness, right? Knowing this, um, knowing that the law of correspondence operates and is parallel to all planes, you know, the things that apply to laws on the physical plane also apply to the mental and the spiritual. It's basically stating that all things are interconnected in a way that is truly mind-blowing to change our outer world we must change our inner world that's to put it most simply when it comes to the law of correspondence we we use these terms these ancient greek terms of microcosm and macrocosm maybe you've heard of them maybe you haven't but you know a microcosm is roughly translated to an individual human being as a little world that is truly the fucking cutest thing I've ever heard. But that's why we hear in spiritual Twitter, in spiritual culture, you know, you are a universe. Alina Braz said, there's a universe inside of you. It's not just some cliche term or sentence. It's literally the truth. And microcosm being translated to individual human being as a, its own little world. Um, the opposite of that is the macrocosm, which is the opposite, you know, the big picture. Macrocosm is translated to broken up, you know, into macros, cosmos, you know, the bigger picture. So when we talk about microcosm and macrocosm, a law of correspondence can explain a lot of this to us. Let's, let's really think about this for a minute. Macrocosm being the universe. We know from the law of mentalism that all things are essentially the same because we come from the same source. The universe was birthed just as we were, you know, spirit is at the top of things and the universe is not. The universe was birthed through mentalism. So microcosm is us, macrocosm is the world around us, and law of correspondence can help us understand things because of the undeniable similarities that, hap that we see between us and the universe. For example, sacred geometry. Sacred geometry is found not only in the cosmos, in outer space, but it's strikingly similar to our inner anatomy. Sacred geometry is seen in plants. It's also seen in atoms. It's seen in molecules. It's seen in um, foods. It's seen in everything of the world. There's also this crazy trippy thing of like, there are foods that help certain parts of your body and the parts of the body that they help, the food literally resembles. Crazy. Can you explain that? Can you, can you, can you? No, law of correspondence can. All planes of existence are parallel. Do you know what else law of correspondence can explain is the chakras. Law of correspondence is birthed through the chakras. Without law of correspondence, there would be no chakras and vice versa. Law of correspondence gives the chakras the ability to be real because chakras are spiritual. Chakras are energy, right? They're a vibration. They are energy. Law of correspondence states that as within, so without. And there is a reason why certain chakras correspond with certain aspects, right? The root chakra corresponds with groundedness and with home. The sacral chakra corresponds with reproductive systems, with sexuality. The solar plexus chakra corresponds with power. It corresponds with standing up for yourself. The heart chakra corresponds with love, with relationships. The throat chakra corresponds with speaking your truth with, you know, being yourself. Third eye chakra corresponds with seeing things for how they really are, which is, which is actually the chakra that the law of correspondence is linked to, the third eye, because correspondence helps us see things, helps us penetrate through the physical matter and see things in a deeper level. And the crown chakra corresponds with 
um, awakening with connectedness to spirit, right? So crazy how, for example, the throat chakra corresponds with literal biological functions. You know, our throat is how we speak. It's what gives us a voice and the throat chakra corresponds with speaking your truth and, you know, speaking up for yourself. Isn't that crazy? The heart. And we all know the heart is the center of love. Heart chakra corresponds with, you know, accepting love, giving love. Solar plexus corresponds with power. Why do you think that we get anxious in our tummy? Why do you think that we get gut feelings? Law of correspondence is my favorite because law of correspondence is the reason why we can learn from anything. We can learn from any experience, movie, song, moment. Every moment is here for us to learn from because every moment is a sign. Law of correspondence is the law that makes signs possible. It makes synchronicity possible. Why do you keep seeing 333? Three, three, three? Why do you keep seeing 111? Why do you keep seeing the same numbers? Why, when you're thinking a thought in your head, and then you tune in a little, and you hear two moments later on the radio, song lyrics that are literally the same words that were just in your head. So if you're in the car and you're thinking like, damn, I just wanna give up. And then five minutes later on the radio comes a song and the lyrics are like, don't give up in whatever kind of way they come. It's because our physical is linked with our mental, the thought like I wanna give up, which is linked to our spiritual, our soul, which is saying, don't give up. Does that make sense? Oh, <sighs> so beautiful, I just can't. When your life is chaotic, when your life is seemingly chaotic, law of correspondence says look within when your environment is chaotic law of correspondence says look within when your insides are chaotic law of correspondence says look without look on the outside who are you keeping around what company are you keeping what energy is surrounding you what is your environment like to you know support your vibration you can truly look at a plant and learn so much as a human and that's the whole idea behind the bloom room it's the whole idea behind this whole concept of when a flower doesn't bloom, it's because of the environment, not because of the flower. There's been so many comparisons of plant life. For example, the fact that each plant, um, each specific plant comes with specific care instructions. One plant may require 10 hours of sunlight, one plant may require three hours of sunlight and water. They all are different and that's how us human beings are, right? One of us may require a, s a company around us. One of us may require alone time. We're all different and we're all so similar to plants and that's the whole reason w behind the bloom room. This is how we apply the law of correspondence using our chakras, okay? Let's say my, my stomach hurts so bad. Why does your stomach hurt? Because the physical corresponds with the mental and spiritual, so why does your stomach really hurt, you know? Law of correspondence gives us a deeper meaning. That's why I fuck with it so heavy. I'm so here for deeper meanings. Surface level, I'm good. You can keep that shit. I'm looking for the deeper meaning. So why does your stomach hurt, you know? It could be because of something you ate, and yeah. It could also be because you're not standing up for yourself. I have terrible stomach problems because I have terrible problems with power. Why does your throat hurt all the time? Why do you have tonsil stones or lymph or swollen lymph nodes or, you know, anything that has to do with throat? How do you deal with, you know, communication? How good are you at that? Do you think you could be better? How do you express yourself? Why does your head hurt so bad? You know, do you need to meditate? Is spirit trying to tell you something if you would just tune in? The things that we feel, there are a deeper meaning behind them all. Law of correspondence helps us understand this. You can learn anything. You can read a book and have this totally different story, but when you look at the archetypes, I really love looking at archetypes. You can apply the archetypes of the book to your life and you can learn so much from a plot, from a storyline, from a TV show, from two words being said, from a sign you see on the street that says, you know, stop or slow down, you know? Everything is a sign, everything is interconnected and nothing happens at random. Law of correspondence is the glue that holds it all together. You might feel like you don't belong here, nothing makes sense, but the thing that's helped me so much on my journey and with my depression is law of correspondence is knowing that, you know, everything's not meaningless. Everything is meaningful and it's up to you to open your eyes and 
to see it for what it is or create a meaning, honestly, you know, who cares if people look at you and are like, oh, she's reaching. People might look at me and be like, this bitch is reaching. She thinks that because this, then this. Okay, well, that reaching is what's saving my life. We need to understand and that helps us cope a lot. And so Law of Correspondence is exactly that. Helps us understand the deeper meanings. Just like life balances out, just like everything balances out, the universe so will balance out and the energies will balance. And all that's required from us is to tune in and pay attention. Open your eyes, look at the signs and apply it. Hold it, you know? Let it mean something to you and learn from it. I'm so happy I decided to do this video over. That one was way better, but um, if you guys have any questions, obviously leave a comment. I'm sorry for making you guys wait, but like I said, I recorded this video like a week ago and decided that I didn't like it. So um, quality over quantity. Quality reigns over everything. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I hope it was profound and I hope it meant something to you and next video in the series of the universal laws is law of vibration, the third law of the universe and thank you guys for watching. Enjoy your night. I hope that my, the darkness in this place is not distracting you. I also hope there's no orbs or ghosts in the background of this video i'm scared to edit it anywho have a great night and keep blooming baby